So last lesson, we talked about and and or and not in mathematics. Today, we're going to try and apply the concept of and and or and not to actual sets of items. We'll also introduce the concept of the universal set, subsets, and empty sets. So set and set notation. In mathematics, a set is actually a hugely important concept, very underrated. It's a collection of distinct objects, which does not sound very profound. Turns out it can be hugely profound if you're clever. For example, the numbers on the faces of a die form a set. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, sets are usually donate, denoted by uh, capital letters and then we use the uh, curly brackets to describe them. So if you see a capital letter in this unit, probably refers, probably refers to a set. Curly brackets always. Each object in a set is referred to as an element. So uh, the number five is an element of the set of the numbers on the face of a die. The number one is an element. Is the number 3.6 a member of this set? No, it's not an element of this set. There are three general ways of defining a set. The most boring and longest way is to list them all. But you <clears> know what? It's the easiest way for small sets. List the even numbers below 10, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, if they're positive integers. List the numbers on a die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're using a capital A as our, uh, this is set A, using squiggly brackets to say it's a set, and just listing them. Uh, we can do it as a description using English. The natural numbers less than 7. Now natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, counting numbers. So all of the, not 0 and no negatives. So the counting numbers less than 7, does that include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? Does it include anything else? That's a way to describe it. Or, and this is the better one, using set builder notation. <coughs> so, you ready? This is red, all x's, such that the x's are less than 7, and, at the same time, natural numbers. It's confusing to look at. Jake, it's the shortest to write it. And so you've had me long enough to know if there's a nice, lazy, clear way to write stuff. I'll even take it if it's a bit more complicated. So this is read, uh, curly brackets is read the set of. A vertical line represents and is read in English as such that. And that funky E, that C with the line, or that curvy letter E, it's actually a Greek letter, epsilon, is read belongs to or is a member of, is a part of. By the way, don't write this down. That probably explains this thing a bit better. That X, E, R is read. X belongs to or is a member of all the real numbers. That's how the domain is all reals. You are going to need to know what this means. You are going to need to know what this means. I don't think you need to go out of your way right now to try and memorize it. I think you will by doing the homework. More terminology. The number of elements in a set is written as lowercase n of a. So for example, the n of set a above is 6 because there's 6 elements in the set. Uh, note that the number 2 belongs to set A, because set A has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But the number 8 does not. So to express this, we can say 2 is a member of A. 8 slash is not a member of A. Does not belong to A. 
The order that you list things does not matter, Logan, although I will tend to order them from smallest to biggest just so that all of our answers look the same. Or if it's words, I'll tend to order them alphabetically or in some way that makes sense. But if you say the answer is the set three, one, two, and, uh, <coughs> sorry, and uh, Matt says the answer is set one, two, three, and Jake says the answer is set two, three, one, they're all the same. But I'd probably list it as one, two, three, just so all my answers look good. Let's do an example. Consider the following two sets. Set P is whole numbers less than or equal to three. Set Q, even whole numbers less than 10. So we'll have to mind our P's and Q's. <laughs> well, no, but we will. Set P, set Q says, list the elements of each set. Okay. Set P. What are whole numbers? What are natural numbers? We did it last class. Do you remember? What are the natural numbers? Positive. I got to be fussier than that. Because 3.2 is not a natural number. Yeah, count, you know what? They're counting numbers. And uh, the reason they're called natural is you can say, look, there's one cow. Look, there's four cows. You can't say, look, there's 3.8 cows unless something's gone horribly wrong, right? Uh, also, zero does not belong to the natural numbers because it makes no sense to say, look, zero cows. No, it doesn't. So natural numbers, one, two, three, four. Listen close. Listen close. Listen close. The whole numbers are the natural numbers with the whole. The whole numbers are zero, one. I just remember the word whole, zero looks like a whole. Whole numbers include zero and then one, two, three. So for set P, whole numbers less than or equal to three, that's gonna be zero, what? One, one comma, comma, comma. No, oh, nothing. Close off the bracket. What about set Q? It says even whole numbers less than 10. All right, what are the elements of this set? What's the biggest even whole number less than 10? Zero is considered even. Complete the following. What's N of P? Yep. What's N of Q? Five. The arithmetic here isn't tough. It's the terminology that you're going to have to kind of memorize, okay? So N is the number of elements in a set. Write P using set builder notation. Okay, this I'm going to help you with. Instead of listing them, I could write it like this. All P's they contain all X's such that and most of your set builder notations will start with all something such that usually an X but some other variable if you choose some other variable. All right, what can you tell me about set P? What can you tell me about the conditions that we used to form it? Kyle, can you read to me the description in English of set P at the top of the question? So the first thing I'm going to write is x is less than or equal to 3. Now the problem is if I stop there, that would include 2.6. So I'm going to go comma, x must be a member of, must belong to, what type of number did you say they were? Whole. What would be a good abbreviation to use for the set whole numbers? Capital W. In English, that says, set P is made up of all X's such that X is less than or touching equal to three. 
while also at the same time, x must be a whole number. What does that result in spitting out? 0, 1, 2, 3. D says, and this is much tougher, which of the following is set builder notation that describes set Q? Which of these would generate 0, 2, 4, 6, 8? Let's see. Let's look at the first one. This says all x's, what does the vertical line mean? How do I read that in English? Such that x's are below 10 and whole numbers. Would that spit out 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and nothing else? Some said yes, yeah, some say no. What else would that spit out that we don't want? Okay, that includes the odd numbers. So you know what? That's wrong. Okay, let's look at set B, or example B. Ah, you know what? Instead of X, they're using the letter E. Why E? Ah, I'm going to guess they chose E for even numbers. So all E's such that take E and multiply it by 2X. What are my X's between 0 and 10 and whole numbers? Hmm. This is, again, tricky, Laura. I got you. This is tough to figure out. So let's start plugging stuff in. Let's look at the x's. What's the smallest x value? So what's 2 times 0? So this would generate a 0. Hey, that's pretty good. And then it wants x to be whole numbers. So as I move up, what's the next whole number that x can be? Whole number. 1. And then it says go 2 times 1. It says the next term for set E is going to be 2. Okay, this is looking good. What's the next one? 3, which would give me a? Why is this one wrong? It's going to give me a 6. It's going to give me an 8. Ah, but as soon as I get to x equals 6, and I am allowed to go up to 10, what's 6 times 2? Ah, it's going to give me a 12 eventually. Is that what I want? Okay, so you know what? Although this starts to generate the right set by plugging stuff into the formula, it doesn't have the right condition. So between C or D, which one looks good? C. What's wrong with D? Okay, well, it includes x equals 5, and when you plug in x equals 5, you're going to get a 10, and that's not part of the set. C. I didn't say this was simple. I think mathematically, hey, we're multiplying and counting. It's arithmetic as simple as you're going to get. Logic and symbology, this is tough. Having said that, I alluded last day, this is great shorthand for college note-taking. I used to use was a part of in my notes all the time. So for example, you would see BC was a part of Confederation in 19, you would use these in your notes all the time. You got good at it. It was a handy way not to have to write stuff down. Belongs to such that is a part, I, I used to use all sorts of notation. Actually was a part of, my bad, was a part of is that one there. This is uh, such that. Turn the page. Some terminology used in set theory. OK. Betty is defining sets using non-negative single digit numbers. OK. From the list of non-negative single digit numbers, she defined the following sets, even numbers. What are the non-negative single-digit even numbers? Rattle them off for me. 2, 4, 6, 8, you're missing one. OK, 0 is defined as positive, so uh, let me double check. Yep, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. By the way, if we wanted to write it in set builder notation, we could have written this, except it's faster just to list them in this case. Uh, set L is whole numbers less than 7. What are the whole numbers less than 7? Yeah. 
zero, one, three, four, five, six. Whole numbers are the natural numbers with a whole with a zero. Set O is the odd numbers less than seven. All right. What are the odd numbers? Surely be odd whole numbers. One, three, and five. Okay, we have our three sets. We're going to use these three sets to give you some more terminology. All right? The first idea is the universal set. What's the universal set? There is usually some largest set that we're pulling stuff from to create our smaller set. We refer to this as the, underline the word, universal set. For example, in spelling, you know what the universal set is? The alphabet. The alphabet. You don't use every single letter in every single word, but I'm telling you, every time you're writing a word, you're pulling from that set. It gets more complicated pretty quickly, but that's the best example I can give you. Um, so what's the universal set? Well, the universal set that we started out with was non-negative single digit Numbers. There's the English description. I probably, if I had a choice, Logan wouldn't write out the English description. I would just list them. What are the non-negative single digit numbers? That's a terrible curly bracket. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There. That's the universal set. Traditional symbol for the universal set, capital U for universal. Usually, in your guys' case, the universal set will be uh, all natural numbers or all whole numbers or all reals. That's where you're yoinking everything from. In fact, in all the math that we do in high school, it's kind of understood that when I ask you to solve, uh, you're looking within the set of all reals. That's our universal set where we're pulling everything from. We don't do what are called complex or imaginary numbers. There's some numbers that are imaginary. They're named imaginary, but they really do exist. Subset. You've seen this word. What's a subset? It contains some or possibly all of the elements from a previously defined set. Uh, all the sets that we deal with in a problem are automatically subsets of the universal set that they came from. Uh, all words are subsets of the alphabet, which may seem pretty obvious, but we're trying to build up some good logic foundations here, Hannah. Oh, every set is automatically a subset of itself. The alphabet is automatically a subset of the alphabet because we said a subset contains some or all of the elements of the original set. Does the alphabet contain some or all of the letters of the alphabet? Yeah, it contains the or all part. You can't be a subset if you contain any elements that are not part of the universal set. So for example, uh, if I included the Greek letter, oh heck, uh, pi, that's not going to be part of the alphabet set. It can't be part of the subset of letters in English. In set notation, this is used to represent the term subset. So I wrote here, or the author wrote here, 
E is the subset of the set U. Let's go look, Grayson. E is the subset of the set U. Does every number I wrote here appear somewhere in here? Then yes, it is a subset of the universal set. And I know I'm saying set a lot, sorry. Is E a subset of L? Let's go look. Does every number here appear somewhere in here? So we would write then that E is not a subset of L. It says in the next line, set O is a subset of L, which is a subset of set U. Right? So we would say this, O is a subset, and I really exaggerate it, because what I don't want it to look like is a capital C, right? Of L, which is a subset of U, and I guess that means automatically that O must be a subset of L, sorry, of U. Because if O belongs inside set L, and L can fit inside set U, O must fit inside there too. Let me pause. Sterling is kind of abstract, hopefully logical. I'm not going to argue that it's instantly clear. I'm hopefully arguing that it's, if you put your mind to it, logical. What else do we need to define? The empty set. The empty set is the set that is what it sounds. It contains no elements. And the dotation for empty set is a zero with a line through it. So you can either do that, or sometimes you'll actually see it put in brackets. When I was a kid, we also used to symbolize it literally as an empty set. The problem was, once typing came around, that looked too much like you just accidentally hit space and meant to put something there. So we tend not to use that one anymore. For example, the set of all odd numbers in set E. Let's go look at set E. What is the set of all odd numbers in this group? Empty set. Empty set. Okay? Provide another example of a set that is empty. What are all the dates that Jordan is going on this weekend? Empty set. Right? Empty set. Maybe not. How about provide another example of a set that is empty? How about, I'm going to write this one once I see my cursor. Nope, OK. I feel, le I feel reasonably certain that the set of all nine-wheeled motorcycles is empty. I don't think I could say that for three-wheeled motorcycles. I don't think I could say that for four-wheeled motorcycles. I probably could say that for five or six, but I went way out. I would be willing to bet $1,000 right now that nowhere on the planet is there a nine-wheeled motorcycle. You'd just be stupid. Well, I saw a Dr. Seuss book in real life on the planet, not in a Dr. Seuss thing. Sure, if you can find a nine-wheeled motorcycle. Not right now, though. See, Jordan said, hey, Mr. Dude, because now we're talking about how we define sets. He's saying, isn't a motorcycle by definition called a motorcycle because it has two wheels? And if that's the case, then this is a true statement. But I don't know what the official definition. This is why we're talking about defining and 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 or and all the terminology. But you're starting to see, hey, wait a minute. Actually, you can start to use this in logical arguments. The compliment. The compliment is not what your mom wants you to say to your aunt when she gives you a sweater for Christmas. The compliment of a set is the set in the universal set that don't belong in the set we're looking at. Say what? Okay. The complement of set A is the set of all the elements in the universal set that are not in set A, 
and it's usually denoted by a with an apostrophe pronounced a prime. Yes, technically, he's a complement of a set somewhere in math for those of you who are fans of the movies and the cartoons and the comic books. Okay? As an example, write the complement of set E. There's the symbol. And I got to scroll back up to the top of the page now. You guys have it in front of you, but I don't. It's an apostrophe that's slanty and straight. In fact, honestly, when you're typing, usually you use an apostrophe, but if you look long and hard, I think it depends on your keyboard, you may actually see a prime symbol somewhere. Okay? Pardon me? Uh, nope, that's uh, this way which technically means something else. Um, okay. E was the even number, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. We said the universal set was from 0 to 9. So what's the complement? What numbers are in here, but not here? Rattle them off to me. 1, comma, 3, comma, 5, comma, Seven, comma. Nine. By the way, a little, uh, do we mention it later? Not yet. You may notice if you add the complement and the original, you get your universal setback. Because that's everything. If you and it's, in English, Taylor, we would say if you add up list one and everything that's not in list one, you get the whole group of stuff that you started with, which seems really, really obvious, but actually it's profound. It's just something you take for granted. Turn the page. We got what? A uh, few? Yep, yeah, we're gonna get about 15 more minutes. More terminology. Actually, first an example. So. Consider the following two sets. Natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 3. And then set B, natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 5. First of all, what do you think the universal set is for both of these? Where are we pulling everything from? And your answer is, the big thing that they have in common. What do they both have in common? Natural numbers less than 20. So we would say the universal set is Oh, you know what? Let's write it with set builder notation. Can I make it, Mackenzie? You're not looking good. It's the sweater. You're warm. I know. All x's such that, first of all, x has to be less than 20, but that's going to include decimals and negatives, comma. x must be a member of, our symbol for natural numbers is a capital N. That's how you would say all natural numbers, that's the very, very last part, less than 20, that's the middle part. List the elements in the following sets. All right, what is in set A? Natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, squiggle bracket close. Set B, the natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 5. 
Rattle them off. 5, 10, 15, tw oh, not 20, because 20 is not less than 20. All right. What would A prime be? Anything in the universal set that doesn't show up in A. Now, what's the universal set? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 18, 19. Right? So, they want us to list them. It's going to be a bit of a pain, but okay. What's the first element in A prime in the complement? What else? 2, 5, because we're doing set A's complement. Six, oh, not 6. 7, 8, skip. 10, 11, skip. I've spotted a pattern. 13, 14, skip. 16, 17, skip. 19, stop. Is that okay, Hannah? You got to think a little bit. Again, I don't think the arithmetic is tough. I think the logic and reasoning is tough. Giancarlo, are you going to make it? I think you were gone. More than a second, believe me. Part C says, uh, write a description of the elements of the complement of set B in words. So what is set B in English? The natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 5. And that's the key phrase, that are divisible by 5. What would the complement be in English? I'll give you a hint. The natural numbers less than 20 that are not. Hey, not. We looked at that word last day. This is a negation. Okay. So in English, we would say B prime equals the natural numbers less than 20. I have no problem if you want to abbreviate less than 20 like that, because that's how I would read it, less than 20, that are not divisible by 5. There's my B prime. I just use an apostrophe when I'm typing. Okay, a new set, set C. Natural numbers less than 20 that are multiples of 6. And then it says, state whether the following are true or false. You know what? I think I can't visualize this without quickly writing out set C. So what are the numbers inside set C? 6, 12, 18. And then it's saying, true or false, all the numbers in set C are a subset of set A. All the numbers, oh, first of all, I got sloppy. I should have used uh, set notation, Mr. Duick. Mac, we're asking, all the numbers here appear inside here, true or false? So set C is a subset of A. And we said last day, what's our symbol for true going to be? True or false, set C is not a subset of B. Or in English, all the numbers for C don't appear inside B. Uh, you know what? That's true. In fact, none of them do. 15 appears here, but not in here, right? This is set C, this is set B. Three, ooh. A prime is a subset of C prime. Okay, we wrote out A prime. What would C prime be? 
all of this skipping those three. Uh, sorry, all of, all of going from one to all of this skipping those three numbers. <sighs> I don't want to write this out. Really don't. So, hmm. Hmm. Oh, let's see if we can just kind of uh, count our way there, Ashley. So this here is going to be 1 through 19, skipping 6, 12, and 18. You visualize it? 1 through 19. So if I take all these, will these appear in there? Let's see. 1, check. 2, check. 3 fits here. It doesn't appear here. I don't care. 5, uh, sorry, 4, check. 5, check. Skip 6. Doesn't matter. Skip 6. You, you know what? I think, isn't, I think it's true, is it not? I think. In fact, uh, there's a lot of overlap. Is C prime identical to A prime? Not quite. I think the magic would be uh, the 3 that appears and the 15 that appear, but other way around. A little bit more and we're done. Intersection, think, overlap, and union of sets. So let's use the same three sets. Even numbers less than 10. Numbers from uh, 1 through 6, sorry, from 0 through 6, and 1, 3, 5. The intersection, which is called A and B, now Brianna, we're going back to the vocabulary from last day, it's written as A, yump, B. That's our symbol for and. Think, uh, look up. And begins with a capital letter A, except uh, not that, if you're looking for a dumb way to remember it. And it's the list of elements that are in both. So, E intersection L. What numbers appear in both E and L? What's the intersection? Where do they overlap? Zero. Two, four, six, eight? No. By the way, it's very easy to start following a pattern and get sloppy, so just always be checking yourself, right? That's the intersection. The union, symbolized with something that looks like a U, but not quite, with that. That's how I remember. Honestly, by the way, Mackenzie, I know that's union. I know the other one's intersection. But whenever someone says, write the intersection symbol, you'll see my eyes glaze over. I'm remembering that's union, so intersection is the one that faces downwards. Um, it's called A or B, written as A union B. And it's the set of elements that are either in A or B or both, what we call the inclusive use of or last day. So what is the union? of E and L. What numbers appear in one or the other or both? Zero does. One does. Two does in both. Three does in L. Four does in both. Five does in L. Six does in both. Eight does in E. Did I get them all? I think I did. I think I did. Disjoint sets. Two sets are said to be disjoint if they have no elements in common. Uh, for example, uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7 are disjoint. Uh, a fancy way to write that is when A 
intersection B equals the empty set when the intersection doesn't exist. We say they are disjoint. Um, looking at set E, L, and O at the top of the page, which ones are disjoint? Which ones have no overlapping members? E and E and O? Uh, yep. And, and actually, all I'm doing is just looking at each one and moving my eyes back and forth, right? I'm not doing anything more high tech than that. Uh, so we would say E and O are disjoint. Or we could say the intersection of E and O is the empty set. You okay, Mark, so far? A couple more, we're done. So let's look at an example. By the way, Grace, remember at the beginning of this lesson, I said the arithmetic isn't going to be that tough. It's the terminology. Practice, 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 and you'll start to memorize the symbols. So we have our nat uh, same three sets as before. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, natural numbers less than 20 divisible by 3. 5, 10, 15, natural numbers less than 20 divisible by 5. And 6, 12, 18, natural numbers less than 20 that are multiples of 6. Okay. Is that union or intersection? How can I remember if it was a union, what would it look like? A U, okay, intersection, overlap. Looking at set A and B, which term appear, which terms or term appears in both? Just 15? What about A union B? Ugh. Start listing. Three, five, six, nine, ten. 12, 15, 18. I would not take marks off if you just listed the first one, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, comma, 5, comma, 10. If you just, but I tend to put them in numerical order if I can. That's just me being me. Don't list something twice if it appears twice, though. Just list it once. Ooh. The intersection of A prime and B. Numbers that don't appear here, but also appear here. Okay. It says describe each set in words, but I think just listing it is clearer. Uh, part B, write a set equivalent. Okay, B, uh, what's that symbol? Intersection overlap. Okay, where do B and C overlap? B and C overlap in 6, 12, and 18? Where to B and C? What? Oh, Nothing. And by the way, you can see we're being very fussy. It's a zero with a line through it to show that we're not saying zero is an answer because zero could be an answer. No, 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 no. Zero is not a member of this set. Nothing is. Okay. A U union combined with. Uh, okay. That's going to be uh, 3, 6, oh, you know what? 9, 12, 15, 18. It looks like A union C just gives you set A back again because all of C appears in A. 
You see it, Darian? You know what else that means? That means C must be a subset of A for that to be true. Otherwise, I would have picked up an extra element when I unionized them. What about A intersection C? which happens to be all of set C, which also tells you that set C is a subset of A, because if the overlap is one entire set, that must have been a subset of the other one. All right, let's add one more. This is the last one. Yep. So now we have set D, which is 2, 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, uh, even numbers less than 20. List the element. OK. B uh, brackets first, the union of those two, and where do those intersect with A? OK. Can I get this all on one page? I can, just barely. So here's set B. Here's set D. The union would include a 5 right there. Can you visualize it? A 10. Oh, it's already got a 10 and a 15 right there. That would be the union. Can you see it? What's the overlap, the intersection between set A and that? Does 3 work? No. 6? Because 6 appears in set D. What's the next one? Nine. Ooh, I heard several there. Let's see. A contains 9. Does D contain 9? Does B contain 9? You know what? Sorry, 9 on 9. 9 is 9. No, German. OK. Oh, come on. That was pretty good. Uh, 12, someone said. Is that what I heard? Let's see. Oh, 10? 10 appears here. 10 appears here. 10 does not appear in A, so there's no overlap. If it had been a union, sure, but no, no overlap. Uh, 12 appears here, so 12 is inside the union, and 12 appears with A. You know what? I'm starting to spot a pattern. I might guess 18 as my next one, but let's kind of keep careful and check. Uh, yeah, you know what? Whew. That is A intersection bracket B union D. Yo, am I wrong? You forgot the 15. It's in B. Ah. 15 comes from B, and it appears in A, so it overlaps. I missed one. Candy later. Like I said, I haven't taught this for a while. I got to keep this on the screen, Mr. Duke. Let's try another one. The intersection of A and B. Now, you know what? Really, I shouldn't have been so lazy. I should not have done it in my head. I should have shown some sketch work. So I see in brackets for part two, the intersection of A and B. What is the intersection of A and B? This says A intersection B. What is that? You know what? This is really 15 union D. OK, I can list that. 2, 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18. I missed the 6. Candy for Ty. Easy to make mistakes in this. <sighs> Third one. Is, that, is it 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14? You add 15 and then 16 and 18. Did I miss one? Go kind of group crowdsourcing this. Last one. Complement of A overlapping with complement of B, and then take the complement of, holy smokes, that. 
I, I think I need to draw this, and I'm going to draw this uh, up here somewhere because I need some room. So what's the complement of A? One, two, not three, four, five, not three. Oh, I remember this. Skip six, seven, eight, skip nine, ten, eleven, skip twelve, thirteen, fourteen, skip fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and nineteen. That there is A prime. This is just rough work I'm sketching somewhere. B prime. Uh, everything except 5, 10, and 15. I don't feel like writing it out. Not 5, not 10, not 15, but everything else. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. They want the intersection of that. Okay. Well, what would the intersection be? This would appear, this would appear, this would appear. Not that. This would appear, this would appear. Not that. This would appear, 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 that, right? Yeah? <sighs> Now they want the complement of that. So whatever is not circled, if we count from 1 to 20 by 1s. That I can do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 6. Seven, no, eight, no, nine. Ten, no, eleven, no, twelve. Thirteen, no, fourteen, no, fifteen. Sixteen, no, seventeen, no, eighteen. Nineteen, no. So if you come to a really nasty one like that, Taylor, don't be afraid to do some sketches. And yeah, it means writing out some numbers, but be organized somewhere off in the margin and you'll be okay. What's your homework? One is good. Two is good. Skip three, four is good. Five is good. Really, five names that begin with a J? You couldn't make it e six, seven? Oh, forget it. I'm not going to do six. Uh, seven is good. Eight works, and then let's do some number ones. I think nine works, although we get into some nasties. Um, ten is good. Yeah, 11 is good practice, and you guys are getting lots of time to work on this, 20 minutes. Uh, 12 and 13, skip 14. I think you'll get it done in class. Like, they go pretty quick when you start wrapping your brain around it. I haven't assigned these before, so I'm kind of making a gut instinct as to how long each question takes, but I don't think I went...